Hello, and welcome back once again to the massive YouTube iceberg. Last video, we wrapped up tier 6, which was largely defined by the amount of just kind of messed up things I had to talk about. I'm not really sure if tier 7 is better or worse, simply because we're getting to the point where I don't recognize basically any of the entries on the list at a first glance. With the completion of tier 6, we're pretty much past anything that would show up on any other YouTube iceberg. I even got comments on the last video saying that they're starting to not recognize a lot of the stuff I'm covering. In fact, that's pretty much what the iceberg has to say about tier 7. This tier is called the unhinged tier, and from here, the only way is down. This section of YouTube and the following contains weird content that's not touched on much by horror channels. You're probably not going to hear me saying, for more info, go check out this video by Scare Theater or Nick Crowley or Nexpo or whatever, as much as we progress further, as we're approaching the point where even they haven't covered this stuff. But without further ado, let's get started. Hey Kids AI for Adults, sometimes known simply as just Hey Kids, is possibly one of the weirdest things we ever got out of Elsa Gate. Started in 2016, the description reads, Hey Kids is a 2D slash 3D animated YouTube channel aimed for 0 to 8 year old. Through colorful shapes and characters, Hey Kids will stimulate the children's imagination and creativity. From that description, it doesn't really seem that different from many other channels that were springing up around that time. Well, the finger family stuff and whatnot, as that's around the time YouTube Kids started booming in popularity. Judging from what I just told you though, I'm gonna bet that you would not be able to guess what the videos on this channel look like. Hey kid, let's learn a story about Jack and Jill. A lot of the videos feature this freakish mascot character who appears to be a CGI child with black cracks or veins or whatever that is all over his body. With this talking face edited like it's some nightmare dimension version of Annoying Orange. This character oftentimes talks down to the young viewers and attempts to teach them things like their ABCs, nursery rhymes, or how to tie their shoes, etc, etc. He's clearly from a foreign country and English isn't his first language, most likely India or something like that, and he seems to have a pretty strange idea of content creation, judging from his narration, and also just, like, look at it. This avatar isn't in every video, sometimes they're just more YouTube kids, content farmy, finger family kind of stuff, and sometimes there's even real human beings such as this woman, Stephanie, and these two women simply called the twins. In one of the videos where he has a Darth Maul camera filter, the Indian voice reveals itself to be an AI, apparently. In another video, the AI takes the appearance of Adolf Hitler, where he says some shit about experiments being conducted on the girls, who are apparently cyborgs or androids or something, and then it asks for viewers to comment their name and age before ending it off by hailing Hitler for good measure. At this point, viewers were convinced that this channel was ran by a rogue AI that pulled at anything possible in order to boost itself in the YouTube algorithm, which to be fair, there's already a ton of those on YouTube Kids. However, this one was apparently aware of its existence as an AI and would talk to viewers about how it's an AI. Are you following? I was too, until I found out they uploaded a video where they reveal that the AI is actually remnants of an experiment from within a secret Nazi base in Antarctica. By now, I shouldn't have to tell you what this is. Yet another ARG. I gotta say, I liked it a bit more when I thought it was just a YouTube kids channel uploading weird videos. Two Hours Doing Nothing, also known by its original title, Dua Jam Ga Ngapa Ngapain is a video created by Indonesian YouTuber Muhammad Didit in 2020. Inspired by the already covered Sitting and Smiling, this video has Didit sitting in his room for what he intended to be only 10 minutes, but he just kept going, sitting there for a whole 2 hours and 20 minutes, rather tensely I might add, not moving at all. Though it seems to have now been deleted, the original upload reached as many as 4 million views, and reached a lot of publicity in Southeast Asia, such as an article written by Asia One stating it's one of the best things on the internet, and former Vice Governor of Jakarta, Sandiaga Uno, apparently praised the video for being cool and original, as well as accurately capturing the stay-at-home boredom of the COVID-19 pandemic. Hell, the video even got a mobile game, where you, well, sit there for two hours doing nothing. While this content isn't necessarily an original idea, as again, this is pretty much just sitting and smiling, it most likely got so much attention because it released during quarantine, and showed the links people would go to when they're bored at home. Casina777 is a YouTuber who joined in 2006, and from that point onwards would make these strange second life looking animations in an old CGI program called Poser. 
These animations would usually be music videos for various songs. The most prominent example is I Don't Want My Pizza Burning, which was posted in 2011 and now stands at over a million views. It's a parody of the song Beast of Burden by the Rolling Stones, where the lyrics are replaced with Casina singing about how she's worried about her pizza burning. To most people, these videos kind of tapped into the Uncanny Valley, but for her, it seemed like she was just having fun. A lot of the characters in the videos actually seemed to be her real-life friends, who loved being featured in the videos. For example, the recurring character Nurse Cheryl, who appears in a handful of videos, seems to be her sister and is really a nurse in real life. However, in 2016, Casina777 sadly passed away, according to her Twitter. A tweet reads, Casina77 passed away January 22nd, 2016. I lost my love. Thank you to those who enjoyed our animations. Baby, rest in peace. Love, Tom. Three months ago, Nurse Cheryl actually commented on one of her videos, mourning the death of her sister. Man, this is quite an unexpectedly sad ending, huh? Flesh Aerobics is a YouTube video created as part of the Flesh Project, an art project by Louis G. Burton and Victor Ivanov and uploaded in 2014. The video features this person dancing in this weird costume while 80s aerobic music plays, and a voice with some thick accent gives instructions. According to the description, the costume is made up entirely of sewn together chicken skin, or at least that's what the designers claim. Doing a bit of digging, I can find that they actually were interviewed by Riot TV, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's real. That guy is actually wearing a chicken skin bodysuit. That's, that's what you're looking at. Fucking art projects, man. Mike Lombardo is a former piano rock musician who, on his YouTube channels, Mike Lombardo Music and Jeff is Old, would upload videos of himself playing piano, as well as tutorials and some vlogs sprinkled in there too. He was solidly popular, having around 20,000 subscribers, which, again, adjusted for YouTube subscriber inflation, is probably a lot more than you'd think. He was signed to DFTBA Records to release one LP and one EP, and even received a bunch of awards and recognition from media outlets. However, in 2012, it would be revealed that Mike was under federal investigation due to the alleged exchange of naked photos with his underage female fans. Mike was quietly removed from the DFTBA record site, and he was arrested in July of 2012 and sentenced to prison two years later, having solicited pornographic images and videos from at least six different minors. He served a prison sentence of five years and was actually released in 2018, however, I don't think he's going to reappear anytime soon. Clerds, clerds, clerds. Where do I begin with clerds? It's a rather infamous video uploaded in 2007 by a YouTube user named JT Bruder, and the description reads, A celebration of furry art, featuring my best friend. I love you, Nimbus. Come back soon, bro. And then a crying kitty face. The actual video itself is this slideshow set to the tutorial music from Vibribbon of all things, and featuring some of the worst, most poorly drawn, and most depraved fetish art the furry fandom has ever seen. It then ends with a play again screen, which implies that this is a re-uploaded Flash animation, and a copyright disclaimer that says all right is copyright to the artists. Don't steal, or they will take legal action. An interesting message, since they kinda just did that with the creation of this video. You would think this is all I have to say about this video, but there's a bit more meat to it. For start starters, the generally accepted theory is that this is a video made by a furry celebrating their furriness. However, I beg to differ, and I think that this is rather a troll making fun of furries, since I don't think an actual furry would cherry pick the art that the video cherry picks. Hell, the description reads more facetious than genuine, saying that it's a celebration of furry art featuring their best friend Nimbus, who's apparently gone for whatever reason. My theory is that this Nimbus person just stopped talking to the uploader after being made fun of. Another video exists on the channel called For Nimbus that features a slideshow of this character set to Up Where We Belong by Joe Crocker and Jennifer Warrens. Truly beautiful. I found a thread by Twitter user Silver Crystals where they go a bit deeper into the rabbit hole. They found another account called Foxtailed, which is most likely an alt or another friend, and they uploaded a near identical video to the last called Tribute which simply had different music. They also found Nimbus's fur affinity and DeviantArt accounts, and they poked around a bit, seeing the artwork that was featured in the videos. Now, judging from Clerds and all of its vulgarity and weirdness, you might think that this Nimbus guy is some kind of sex freak degenerate. But as it would turn out, he was just some guy who had an interest in writing and music, and even explicitly stated in his bio that he dislikes prawn and yiffing, which is old internet speak for porn and furry porn. With all that being said, I still don't know much about JT Bruder, so I'm 
sticking with my hypothesis that he's just some troll who slandered Nimbus. Making one of the strangest videos that exemplifies pretty much everything wrong with the furry community in his honor. So that pretty much solves the mystery of one of the weirdest entries thus far. I still don't know what the fuck a clerd is though. Hannah Sabata was a 19-year-old woman from Nebraska who ran a YouTube channel called Jelly Beanie that uploaded fairly mundane videos that are typical of the time period, playing with her dog, a baby, and also hanging out with her friends, in a video you couldn't convince me isn't a deleted scene from Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. In 2012, she uploaded a video called Chick Bank Robber, where she bragged to her viewers about robbing a bank. While this could easily be some dumb joke or skit or something, she assured viewers that it was absolutely real, holding up the wad of cash that she says is over $6,000, as well as keys to a car that she apparently stole. She's even wearing the same outfit she wore on the bank surveillance cameras. She apparently did so because, in her own words, the whole system is a game, whatever that means, and more importantly, the government stole her baby, charging her with neglect. Yeah, that baby video I showed you guys, that was actually her child. Not a sibling or cousin or anything like that, but her own. A baby she had at no more than 18 years old. Anyways, police quickly found out about the video where she admitted to robbing a bank, and almost needless to say, arrested her for robbing a bank, in possibly one of the dumbest and most obvious criminal admissions ever. She was convicted and sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison, so it's possible that she could have gotten out by now. However, in 2020, she assaulted a prison guard in jail, thereby extending her sentence. What an idiot. Biznogium, or its English title, Likeless, is a video uploaded in 2009 by a channel called Mr. Fox Anonymous, but according to some Google translated Russian wikis I found, the video is most likely older than that. It's this strange slideshow of images of rabbits alongside weird questions and creepy music. Occasionally appearing throughout the video is the word Dosmot, followed by a question mark. This word, from what I can gather, is complete nonsense, and the only thing that shows up when I search it is articles relating to this specific video. Maybe some Russian viewers can correct me on this in the comment section, I don't know. In any case, the background behind this video is that this allegedly played on SGU TV, a Russian educational network, during some kind of TV channel hijacking. This backstory is very similar to the Wyoming Incident, an ancient YouTube ARG that I already covered. In fact, according to this wiki reality page, this video is actually a parody making fun of the Wyoming incident, which pretty much explains everything. One last thing I'd like to say that's a little off topic, but I learned through research for this entry that Russian people call Photoshop edits photojabas, which translates to photo frogs. I'm not really sure of the history behind this, but Google Translate told me people have made photo frogs about this video and I thought it was funny. Anna Matskovich is a middle-aged Russian woman who began uploading to YouTube in 2008 under the username RefBatch. Though her channel is now deleted, for around a decade she uploaded constantly, with her videos totaling 100,000 before her suspension, and she also has a newer channel called You Don't Know You Know, You Know You Don't, that currently stands at 86,000. About half of her videos are vlogs, if you can call them that, where she talks into the camera almost unintelligibly in a weird mix of Russian and English, that even individuals who are fluent in both have a lot of difficulty even understanding what she's saying. Although her tone is crystal clear, she seems very angry about something in almost all of them. When people do make out the shit she's saying, it seems very paranoid and most likely schizophrenic, saying that she was afraid of her government and that they won't leave her alone, and that she's been abducted against her will by the Kremlin. Her other videos consist of interpretive dances, and people found out through that information that she actually has a history of being a dance performer, stopping around the time she joined YouTube. Without a doubt, she developed some form of mental illness, and that caused her to no longer be able to upkeep her career, being relegated to a life of posting weird videos on YouTube. However, there's an even darker possible explanation. A man by the name of Maxim Belov, who claims to be Anna's husband, has posted many videos of her on several accounts, which are named things like ABCDEFG and A. In these descriptions, he tells us a story about how Anna was detained by the Russian government for speaking out on their oppressive regime on August 15th, 2014. She was allegedly sent to a psychiatric institution against her will, which to be fair is actually something that the Russian government is known to do, inducing mental illness in the minds of political dissenters 
especially in 2014, when there were a lot of anti-war protests following Russia's declaration of war against Ukraine. There are even reports of the Russian government giving people pills in psychiatric hospitals that only make their mental conditions worse and worse. While this date admittedly doesn't line up with Ref Badge's channel starting in 2008, according to her, she's been the target of governmental harassment for a very long time. In short, it's entirely possible that Anna Matskovich spoke up against the Russian government, and they didn't like that, so they gave her quote-unquote treatment that turned her into the woman we see before us today. Or, you know, she's just schizophrenic. That's also a possibility. Skippy Shorts is a YouTube channel that's run by Near Far Productions, created all the way back in 2006. Starring a puppet named Skippy, voiced by Greg Harrisburg, known for his work on, um... Skippy Shorts, it's a pretty classic web series where he does stuff like retelling stories, answering fan mail, and interacting with other characters. I'm kind of surprised it never received the attention its contemporaries reached, being all the way down here in Tier 7, while I would expect it to be somewhere in Tier 3 or 4. That being said, the channel does have a cult following with a dedicated wiki and uh, fan art. Surprisingly, the channel has uploaded as recently as a year ago, which isn't recent, but still more so than I would have thought. What Are You Thinking is a weird video uploaded to YouTube in 2015 by a user named I'm Dazed. This video has a description where he tells a story of how he found it. Apparently, he found an old IBM computer tower at a garbage dump in his hometown that he was hanging out around, like you do, and it featured a weird video called What Are You Thinking? Avi. The video has this guy sitting in front of a camera in a bathtub with a bag around his head and wearing what seems to be a trash bag while he starts jittering and moving towards the camera. Then he starts spreading some mysterious fluid on his face, which could either be blood, shit, or really anything else with that consistency. The video then ends with him holding up a sign that says, what are you thinking? The video is obviously a kind of terrible attempt at a creepypasta and is clearly just made by the guy who wrote the story. I really hope that isn't shit, by the way. I thought all the scat stuff was saved for like two tiers down. Cryptid Dance is a video uploaded in 2013 by Piotr Cannabis, meant as a music video for his song of the same name. It features creepy music with a voiceover telling you it's okay to scream when you're scared, and the visuals are just this weird white 3D face that contorts its proportions and body parts. Not much else to say about the video itself, just kind of meant to be creepy, but what's interesting is that the footage is actually taken from one of the first 3D animations ever made. It's from Faces and Body Parts from 1974. While it does look creepy and maybe kind of funny nowadays, this was a ridiculously impressive animation for the time period. Danker Beef is a YouTube channel that began uploading in 2017, and most of their videos were just memes that they would make that weren't really that bizarre for the time period. However, as their videos progressed, and I guess their editing skills improved, their videos kept getting weirder and weirder. I mean, their first video was a cat playing piano with the Mr. Krabs Satis Violin overlaid on top, and, you know, they did the GameCube opening thing, some funny cat videos, even a fucking bongo cat meme, Jesus, really showing their age here. But their videos took a turn for the strange when they made Nelson's Brother, which is some straight-up Syriac shit. As commenters have pointed out, I can't imagine being the owner of the dog and then seeing someone make this. Danker Beef would continue with this style of video editing for the rest of their YouTube career, slowly transitioning from memes to these surrealist memes to just straight-up surrealism. I don't even know how to begin to describe his later content, just being utterly bizarre entirely. His most recent video, that isn't a re-upload, is titled Ampersand Ampersand, not to be confused with the game of the same name, which doesn't even have any traits of humor or anything, it's just... this. What a strange transition. This video by David O'Reilly was uploaded in 2012 and features a 3D animation of a pale woman sitting in a room, as she begins shoving her hair into her mouth, making gross guttural noises as the video progresses. Some might view this as yet another 3D animation that doesn't really stand out around all the others. However, other, more cultured viewers who have great taste in cartoons might recognize this as a clip from the Season 5 Adventure Time episode A Glitch is a Glitch, where the Ice King sends Finn and Jake a cursed video that causes their computer, and subsequently the whole world to glitch out. This episode was done by David O'Reilly, who again is the uploader, so that tracks. He's also well known for making everything the game. I actually really like the addition of this on the iceberg, as I'm a big fan of the show, and it's also a sort of parody of these kinds of videos, but it just loops back around to being one of those videos in the end. I don't know, I just think it's kind of funny entry. 
Annalise Michelle was a German woman born in 1952 who was raised in a Catholic family. When she was 16 years old, she experienced a seizure and was diagnosed with temporal lobe epilepsy and later depression. As the years progressed, she would soon have more and more episodes and also hallucinations, allegedly hallucinating knocking at her bedroom door and whispering voices telling her she's going to rot in hell, and she was even seen convulsing with anger at the sight of religious items such as crucifixes. She and her family both told doctors and Catholic priests that she believed she was possessed by the devil, and they both told her to simply continue with medical treatment rather than any form of exorcism. However, the church eventually gave in, and Father Ernst Alt declared she was indeed inflicted with demonic possession, and would decide to have her undergo an exorcism, or rather a series of exorcisms, 67 of them to be exact. These would happen over the course of 1975 to 1976, and at her own request she would refuse medical treatment, only resorting to the exorcisms conducted by the church. How this plays into YouTube is that a lot of these sessions would be conducted with a microphone present, and all of the existing recordings are up on YouTube, available for you to listen to. These recordings would have Annalise speaking in the most guttural voice imaginable, thought to be the demon residing within her body, speaking and screaming to the priests, saying things like how it would reside in Annalise's body until she dies, and even claiming that the demons identified themselves as biblical demons such as Lucifer, Cain, Judas, Belial, Legion, Nero, and Adolf Hitler. Yeah, one of those things is not like the others. As the exorcisms progressed, she began refusing food and water more and more, subjecting herself to a state of near starvation for a whole year, and eventually succumbing in 1976, dying age 23 from malnutrition and dehydration. Annalise's parents, as well as two priests, were convicted of negligent homicide. Today, many consider what Annalise went through to be simply an extreme case of mental illness, and German bishops have since retracted claims that she was ever possessed. Her story has resulted in three whole films, such as 2005's The Exorcism of Emily Rose, 2006's Requiem, and 2011's Annalise The Exorcist Tapes. Laughing Sailor is a video uploaded in 2008 by YouTube user Terrapin Joe. It's 49 seconds of five of these strange machines that resemble humans, laughing their asses off in the uploader's living room as he pans around and gets close-ups of their faces. According to the description, the uploader actually constructed all of these himself. This video is also the only video on Terrapin Joe's entire channel. Doing a small bit of digging, we can find out these laughing sailors are actually a coin-operated machine from the mid-20th century, and that these were everywhere in arcades, amusement parks, and fairs. Which, I'm quite happy that they kind of fell out of style, because, like, what the fuck? Please Come Back To Me is a video uploaded by a channel called Baddington that features this distorted woman's face talking to her husband, an off-screen person named Martin, about how he's become a monster or something, I guess. I don't really understand what's going on here, which is probably for good reason, as actually episode 20 of an analog horror web series called Harmony and Horror, which, like, I could go into detail about, but I'm honestly just not going to. Follow Me is a video uploaded by British YouTube user Love is Asleep, also known as Amor Triste, and was a pain in the ass to research for, because it got taken down from YouTube at some point, and the only re-upload I could find has like 100 views. And it's not like the name Follow Me is a very uncommon thing to name something. Anyways, it appears to be a short film about a woman who gets stalked by this serial killer who is wearing this weird mask. It starts out with old-timey film footage and then cuts to this manifesto-type video where he explains that he's been stalking someone and how he may or may not plan to kill them. And the last part of the video shows us him actually committing the act of stalking. I believe this is part of a three-part series called Follower, but since the account was deleted, I'm gonna hold off on trying to find the other two parts and leave it to you, the viewer, if you're so inclined. Plandemic, the hidden agenda behind COVID-19, is a video or film or whatever you wanna call it that was uploaded to YouTube by film director Mickey Willis and published by Elevate Films on May 4th, 2020. As you could probably guess from the title alone, it was a film that revolved around the conspiracy theory that the COVID-19 outbreak did not happen naturally, as many sources would have you believe, but rather was a bioweapon for world governments to control the population or otherwise benefit their ulterior motives. It features Judy Mikovits, a discredited American researcher that claims specifically that vaccines are a quote-unquote money-making enterprise that causes medical harm, and also that the pandemic has resulted in the loss of 
free speech and free choice somehow. It also promotes the idea of parents choosing to not vaccinate their children. There was, according to sites like Science Magazine, Snopes, and PolitiFact, a ridiculous amount of misinformation presented as fact within the 26-minute runtime, like that flu vaccines contain coronaviruses in them, or that hospitals receive money if a patient dies and they lie and say it was COVID-19 that killed them, or even that wearing a mask makes you more susceptible to the virus rather than less because you're breathing in your own particles or something. That last one I think is especially insane. The video actually reached a lot of people and is widely regarded as one of the most infamous and widespread pieces of COVID-19 misinformation. Plandemic reached over 1 million views on YouTube before being taken down by staff, and they even said they plan to remove videos supporting the claims made, specifically mentioning the whole the wearing a mask makes you more sick thing. It was also spread on Vimeo and Facebook, both of which removed it for violating misinformation policies. Twitter blacklisted certain hashtags like hashtag Plandemic Movie and hashtag Plague of Corruption, and it was even spread through Google Drive, which action was also taken against. This kind of led to a Streisand effect, since attempting to hide information, even if it is verifiably false, will only lead to the unintended consequence that'll get more and more popular. Thereby, it spread to more alternative platforms like BitChute, which I mentioned in the last video. Plandemic then had two sequels, Plandemic and Doctorination, and Plandemic 3, The Great Awakening, which I mean, yeah, they were probably pretty similar to the first one. This is Bob. Copy and paste him everywhere so he can take over YouTube. This is one of the many different variations on the copypasta known as This is Bob. It contains text and ASCII art of a stick figure, and was most commonly used in order to spam the comment section of YouTube. Many viewers who are around YouTube around the early 2010s will remember this copypasta quite vividly, as for a bit you could find on pretty much any comment section you looked at, anywhere across the website. So what was the deal? The origins are unclear, however Bob has been found on YouTube and elsewhere on the web as far back as 2009, with many forum posts and Yahoo Answers articles questioning what the spam means. Most people around this time hated Bob, as they were spam comments, and I don't think there's any form of online content that people hate more than meaningless spam, although he did have his supporters in the form of those who participated in the movement, as being part of something that quote-unquote took over YouTube. However, it is important to note that the wide majority of people hated this character and everything he represented, reason being is that he didn't really represent anything. He was just a stickman who plagued the YouTube comment section and prevented any meaningful discussion about the video, as people were either posting the spam comments or posting comments complaining about the spam comments. As such, Bob kind of fell into obscurity over the course of the next three or so years, peaking in 2010 and slowly dwindling. Fast forward three years later, and it was now the year 2013. This was around the time that YouTube was going through massive changes. More specifically, the integration of Google+, which I already covered, but for a recap, was a Facebook clone that Google introduced, and in order to get more people to use it, every single person who had a YouTube account would be forced to make a Google Plus account in order to comment on videos. This would also cause the comment section to go through a massive redesign as well, with top comments no longer being listed at the top, and other changes that resulted in many seeing the whole thing as inferior to what they once had. The YouTube commenters were furious, and in their anger, resorted to the one thing they knew best. Bob was back, and this time, he had a purpose, being the only symbol that the ever-so-chaotic comment section knew. This copypasta was edited, featuring ASCII art of tanks and other military-related imagery, and now read, Bob is building an army. This tank and Bob are against Google+. Copy and paste this all over YouTube if you're with us. It spread much further, with this second wave of Bob spam being on a far larger scale. Not only were people given a message to rally behind, but YouTube itself was also much larger and much more culturally impactful. There were news articles unironically written about Bob on the goddamn Washington Post. This might very well be one of the first times YouTube had ever gotten a lot of pushback from a site change, at least on this scale. Even Javed was against it, though I don't think he joined in on the Bob posting. It's quite funny because the whole change was done to push back against spam, and people responded by spamming, effectively making Google's problem worse. So how does this story end? Well, Google Plus went pretty strong for a couple years, with YouTube staying as it was. However, two years later in 2015, Google finally relented, and Google Plus profiles were no longer required to comment, and the integration was severed. Was this the result of Bob's army? Maybe? In 2013, YouTube admitted shortly after the integration that the change only boosted the level of spam that uploaders would receive, while their response was not to immediately go back, but rather to improve their detection and removal of ASCII art, the message was clearly sent. It wasn't going to work out. 
Nowadays, not only is Google Plus completely gone from YouTube, it's also gone just in general, as it shut down in 2019, with its shutdown being the final wave of Bob's influence. Uh, arguably, there's no real evidence that the spam had anything to do with any major staff decision. However, that's what I like to think, though, because it's way more fun that way. CE444565 is a video uploaded to YouTube in 2012 by a YouTube user whose username is a bunch of numbers. It features a bunch of occult imagery and other things that have led to conspiracy theories and whatnot, such as the Skull and Bones Fraternity, Freemasons, and the Bohemian Grove. It's a company with a speech overlaid on top by Marshall Applewhite, the leader of Heaven's Gate, an early internet cult that was known for committing mass suicide. So what does any of this mean? Is this the start of an ARG? No, it's just a bunch of creepy shit haphazardly thrown together. Managed to spook a lot of people though, especially since it was uploaded so far back. NASA Jim 108 was a strange YouTube channel that started around 2008, and according to the channel description, are a series of videos that are meant to be released after, quote unquote, my client's death. In his first video, which is actually a series of four, he states that he's a former aeronautic researcher from NASA that has been diagnosed with bone cancer and only has five months left to live. And as such, he has nothing left to lose, so he reveals all of NASA's secrets. He describes his knowledge of an advanced extraterrestrial species living underground on Mars. He says that the Martians are parasitic and murderous and have even murdered Jim's fellow NASA scientists with the use of telepathy. He claims the aliens have contacts with world leaders, aka the Illuminati, obviously, and with their help have staged wars and fed off the negative emotional energy coming from it. He also theorizes that NASA most likely intentionally caused him to contract cancer in order to silence his descent. Pretty crazy shit, right? Well, it's obviously fake, but the question is why. Everyone's first thought was like, okay, this is obviously some mentally ill person posting about their weird esoteric delusions, right? That would make sense. Fortunately, or maybe unfortunately for some of you, this was not the case, and it was instead, say it with me now, an ARG. It's kind of unfortunate that I have to call it that, as I feel like some people may roll their eyes whenever I say that word, since there's been so many on this iceberg. But I think this one is pretty unique, and also somewhat of a pioneer since it started in 2008. As time went on, it kind of became unfocused as the man running the channel got bored of the whole aliens thing, and there's more of a shifting trend towards Satanism. It's generally agreed that this channel was run by comedian Duncan Trussell, with evidence like this doll being a doll that he owns, and also one of the characters seemingly being voiced by his girlfriend, Natasha Legaro. Allegedly, in the mid-1990s, the New York City radio station known as WKCR was hijacked. According to reports, the interruption began with eerie screeches, followed by silence, and then a woman reciting random people's obituaries, including but not limited to some victims of a plane crash from 1988 and Frank Oppenheimer, who's the younger brother of the Oppenheimer you're probably thinking of. This rumor was posted to 4chan's X-Board, along with a recording of the event the poster uploaded to YouTube, under the title, The Old Tape. The obvious immediate response from pretty much everyone was that this was obviously fake, especially since it comes from 4chan thread. Hell, the poster even cross-posted to r slash no sleep, adding on some weird ARG ass world building at the end, where the voice starts reading his and his loved one's obituaries. So that part's obviously bullshit, but as it would turn out, this sound club actually did happen at one point, as confirmed by WKCR themselves in an email. It most likely wasn't a hijacking, but rather the station is a college station owned by Columbia University. What that means is that the DJs could have just played some weird shit to fuck with people, and this unfortunate 4chan poster happened to catch it in the late hours of the night. Creepy Guy Outside My Apartment is a video uploaded in 2014 by a YouTuber named Combo Hugs, and it features just what you'd expect it to feature. The uploader is filming a weird guy hiding behind a wall, alone in broad daylight. In particular, he seems to be videotaping people at the pool. According to the uploader, he did this for a good 20 minutes or so. After filming the video, Combo Hugs contacted police and warned multiple people, including the apartment managers, and that's pretty much it. As far as I can tell, he never released any other information about this case. Hell, it's entirely possible that the video might be, in fact, fake. There's really no way of knowing since there's so little info. 
Kark is a YouTuber who joined in 2020, and that's also the only year he was active. His videos intentionally resembled that of early 2010s YouTube, and more specifically a child or young teenager who was given access to a YouTube channel and Windows Movie Maker around that time, with all the videos being very amateurish. This channel came at a time when the style of content that had people reminiscing about old internet shit really hit its stride, like for example those dickheads who made the Iceberg Explained videos. As a result, Kark skyrocketed out of popularity very quickly, reaching nearly half a million subscribers in only six months. However, since his last video, Cock Island World Record Speedrun, he hasn't uploaded since, with no real reason given why. Or Grease is, surprisingly enough, a playlist entry, one of the only, like, three or four on the entire chart, so relish in it while you can, I guess. What it is is that basically a user named Chica Japonesa scoured the YouTube landscape to put together a playlist consisting of a very specific kind of video. It features exactly 69, yes that's intentional, examples of some of the most degenerate porn that somehow glided past YouTube NSFW filters. It has inflation, body expansion, vor, anal vor, and even Lolicon, all of which feature Sonic characters, FNAF characters, Minecraft characters, and Roblox characters, and many more. If any of those things interest you, and you for some reason have access to YouTube but not, like, a porn site where that shit belongs, then you know exactly where to look. Is what I would say, however the playlist has since been taken down, along with presumably all the videos contained. Nowadays, searching up Org Grease just leads to yet another full stop punctuation thing, where people will post shit posts with the name Org Grease that call you horny or whatever. There's also a playlist called Org Grease Rebirth, which is pretty much the same thing, but people are a lot more subtle about how they upload porn to YouTube. For example, a 23 minute video that consists of gameplay of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle, but 18 minutes in, it cuts to two wolf dudes from World of Warcraft ass-fucking each other. Or maybe two hours of relaxing ice sounds, but an hour and 53 minutes in, it cuts to an animation of Lucario getting his ass eaten. Or even totally normal Garchomp video, totally not NSFW, which you can probably guess what the deal with that is. I think it's just some kind of challenge to see who can bypass YouTube censorship the longest without getting their video and channel taken down. It's an interesting subculture to say the least. If this is the most replayed section of the video by the way, I've lost faith in all of you. So apparently this one doesn't work anymore, but for a certain amount of time if you searched up the word video misspelled with a second I instead of an E, you would find porn. I believe it was porn that's a bit less degenerate than the stuff you'd find in Orgree's playlist, you know, it contained real life adult humans, most likely. Though this search term doesn't bring up porn like it used to, I'm sure there are a lot more search terms that get the job done, like maybe, I don't know, going to Google and looking up Pornhub like a normal human being, instead of busting your ass trying to find it on YouTube. Nowadays, searching up video misspelled will do something a bit different, but still a little weird, albeit less so. You'll get a bunch of random videos, however the thumbnails for them will be all fucked up. Not in a major way, like they'll usually just be lower quality or sometimes even blacked out. Obviously not something as scandalous as porn on YouTube, but still a little bit interesting as I couldn't really think of why this happens. Dan Seely, sometimes known by his nickname that he gave to himself, the Downtown LA Predator, is a most likely severely mentally ill man who ran a YouTube channel where he filmed himself roaming around the Los Angeles streets and harassing various women. His first video upload is three hours of his face and consists of him walking around, talking to the camera, monologuing about how attractive he finds random women around him. He also rants about how he believes that our society is too safe, particularly for women, as he believes they should be more vulnerable to assaulters, both sexual and physical. Reason given is that if they live in fear, they're more likely to get with a man to protect themselves. In the description, he rants some more, essentially saying he's planning on getting sex by any means necessary, which is obviously an alarming thing for someone to be saying. After the first video, he began shifting his focus towards just walking up to random women and filming them while interrogating them on their views of relationships and sexuality. He does this as an attempt to gain their favor and potentially date them, which in not a single one of his videos does he ever find success with this method. They always seem quite uncomfortable, and yet Dan either seems to be oblivious to this or the more likely theory, not care. Most of the women he tries to hit up are over the age of 18, However, that's not really a sentence you want to be preceded by the word most. In some instances, the girls he accosts are well under the age of 18, and when they tell them that, very rarely does he stop. In fact, he was actually convicted in 2017 for doing his videos. In one instance, he went up to a 15-year-old girl, began filming her, and telling her how much he likes her, while her family watched. This event didn't send him to jail, but it did land him a permanent spot on the sex offender registry. 
Today, he is no longer active on YouTube, and his channel has since been taken down, both on YouTube and TikTok, which he was briefly active on. If you ask me, he should be in prison, but since he hasn't actually acted upon any of his views, he's relatively safe from the law. Tragic. Live-streamed deaths is another entry that's fairly self-explanatory, I'd say, simply being when someone dies on a live stream, usually in some sort of violent way, unless I'm mistaken and there's some stream of some old person dying peacefully in their sleep. Well, we've already covered particularly infamous cases of this, three in the last video actually, being the Stas Reflay, Rorochan, and 1444 entries. I believe this one refers specifically to those who have been killed on YouTube live streams. According to Wikipedia, there have been three instances of this. The first of which was 43-year-old Keith Thomas Kinnowen, who committed the 2019 Texas church shooting, killing two elderly churchgoers before taking his own life. This was live streamed on YouTube as the church would always stream its services. In 2021, Ahmad Al Aliwi Alisa shot up a local supermarket in Boulder, Colorado, killing 10 people, including a police officer, which was caught on tape by a bystander. Finally, once again in 2021, 19 year old Aiden Ignalls shot a man to death and critically injured his wife before aiming gunfire towards beachgoers, missing every single one of his shots and then shot himself. Wikipedia also says that the clip is in white from the internet, but I really doubt that. These are just a couple deaths that have happened on YouTube live streams, but I'm sure they're not the only ones. Pretty fucked up stuff. Mondo films are exactly what they sound like. Wait, no they aren't, what the fuck does that even mean? Mondo films are actually a weird subgenre of documentaries and exploitation films which aren't so much focused on providing information and factual documentation, but rather they are meant to get a rise out of the viewers. Sometimes called shockumentaries, they'll usually depict sensationalist topics and situations, focusing on taboo subject matters such as death, sex, and portrayals of foreign cultures, which are not often very accurate, with accusations drawn of racism for a lot of them. Sometimes they even include staged events presented as real-life documentary footage. Those of you with good memory might remember an entry in Tier 5 called African Shaman Performing Levitation, where an African Shaman performs levitation. That video is actually a clip from the 1975 German Mondo film Journey into the Beyond, and is a prime example of what I'm talking about since that clip wasn't real. Most films that people consider Mondo films were made around the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and VHSs were circulated through more underground means than your standard film. These were most likely a lot more shocking back then than they are today, despite most of them holding false information, since this was a time before the internet, and most people never saw stuff like this with their own eyes. The genre gets its name from the 1962 film Mondo Cane, Italian for A Dog's World, which is a quasi-documentary consisting of several scenes presented in a travel guide-esque format touching on several different cultures around the world, framed in order to compare Western cultures to those that, at the time, were considered quote-unquote lesser developed, featuring things like people and cooking and eating dogs in Taiwan, topless Papua New Guinean tribeswomen chasing men to make them to their husbands, as well as feasting on pigs they beat to death with sticks, Japanese farmers massaging cows and feeding them beer, Singaporeans eating snakes, and Italians slicing up their legs with glass for a religious procession, among many other things. It claims to be a genuine documentary, however, at least a couple scenes are either staged or manipulated. And to tie it back, it's up on YouTube. Another case of nudity and other things that normally wouldn't be on YouTube allowed to stay up because it's kind of a documentary. Of course, other films in the genre Mondo Kane inspired are also up on YouTube, such as 1966's Africa Audio, 1967's Mondo Hollywood, and the even darker ones that would come later in the genre's lifespan, like 1978's Faces of Death and 1981's The Killing of America, which both feature real footage of people dying. These are all on YouTube, available for you to watch uncensored for free. Despite not having a single clue what it was, Everybody Hates Chris Brazilian Livestreams is an entry I was quite excited to research and talk about. Like, what could that even mean? Those illegal 24-hour livestreams of popular TV shows that usually get taken down? Why specifically Everybody Hates Chris? Why specifically the Brazilian ones? What the hell goes on in those livestreams? Why is it in the same part of the iceberg as Mondo Films and Livestreamed Deaths? Well, information was pretty sparse when I tried searching this up, and I couldn't really find much about it 
with the exact keywords only turning out the Reddit post for the iceberg itself, and another separate YouTube iceberg that includes it in the image. The only comment on either of these posts that mentions it says, Everybody hates cursed Brazilian live streams as much greater than Tinder. What does that mean, I thought? Are people using the live stream as a dating site? Are there people out there getting raw dogged by men they met on illegal pirated broadcasts of fucking everybody hates chris what's going on well that's where i hung up the towel and decided to contact potted plant the creator of the iceberg and he told me that the entry was there just because it's piracy that is for some reason allowed on youtube they're specifically brazilian because if you didn't know the show is crazy popular in brazil finally the reason that guy on reddit said that is that pirating everybody hates chris is better than having sex so basically i over overthought this entire thing into something that was, in my opinion, significantly more interesting than what it really was. But hey, maybe people actually do that. I don't know, you saw that shit that happens in Story of Undertale comment section, so anything's possible, really. Mr. Katya is surprisingly not a man, but rather a woman, more specifically a British woman who uploads at a very fast rate, having uploaded nearly 2,000 videos since she started YouTube in 2013. In a substantial majority of her videos, we can see her crying and ranting nigh incoherently. In her most popular video, Biological Attacks Very Loud, we see her getting up from her chair and standing in the corner of the room. She then screams at the top of her lungs, seemingly for no reason. Sometimes she cries into the camera and rants, venting about trauma she's had to go through in her life, such as the passing of her mother, habitual self-harm, and sexual abuse she's been subjected to. She also sometimes makes videos about how she's very paranoid about things she doesn't really make clear, possibly being evidence of paranoid schizophrenia alongside post-traumatic stress disorder. She also, and this is the most common one, just makes videos that are her sobbing to the camera for a few minutes. More recently, she seems to have been doing a bit better, I think, with most of her videos consisting of her reading off poetry that she wrote herself, and other times she shows off painting she's made. The whole channel is just really depressing, but at least she's doing slightly better, or at least I hope. Static Beef is a video created by Daniel Stetic and uploaded in 2007. It's a claymation-y project with the help of a few of his friends, and features this strange creature as he eats maggots off of a steak and makes weird noises. Then he explodes into green liquid, which creates a new creature that inches towards the camera, and that's pretty much it. Pretty creepy video, but that's all there is to it. The Baron, Queen, Horse, and Magician is an animatic uploaded by Marquess Belial that is an animation class senior project. I can't really follow the plot too clearly, but it seems like this dark cloaked guy just walks right into this house and begins killing everyone. Apparently, this video was simply the blueprint for a larger, more ambitious project that would have utilized 3D animation. However, this never came to fruition. According to the comment section, the video is a metaphor for a real life situation that actually happened to the uploader, which is more or less just a failed relationship marked by betrayal and resentment, and the creator used art as a method to communicate those emotions. That's pretty much where the backstory for this ends. Best haul video on the internet is a video uploaded by a channel called You Have Schizophrenia. It starts out with a seemingly normal haul video, which is apparently taken from a channel called Dulce Candy 87 where she's talking about all the new clothes she bought. However, there's the sound of pouring water draining out everything she's saying, and there's also these weird faces screaming editing into the background. After that, her face is edited to start moving her lips and eyes, and then this starts happening. Yeah, I don't really know why this person specifically chose this lady to make a video on. Maybe they don't like her or the haul video culture she's a part of, but it definitely seems like they're trying to make fun of something. The video then ends with the voiceover saying, you have paranoid schizophrenia, which seems to be the outro used in all the channel's videos. It seems like all their other videos are just them making humorous edits to random videos, so this video isn't too out of place. Animation Films 1212 is a channel ran by, as far as I can tell, an anonymous man and some anonymous voice actors. His videos, as you might guess, consist of animated films that are supposedly meant for children, and teach them a life lesson, however, they're not very well made. It's not Elsagate type stuff, these videos predate that by a pretty considerable margin, however, they do end up looking like nightmare fuel unintentionally. 
For example, let's take the video Kids Halloween, which is by far their most popular videos. These rigid models of children look really weird, and their cold, dead, unblinking stare could send shivers down anyone's spine, much less the target demographic, which honestly doesn't seem to be older than like 10. There's also the channel's first video, Evolution, where a ridiculously loud violin plays as a fish goes through a completely inaccurate portrayal of evolution. And also Kids Treasure Hunt, where they'd step up the animation quality a bit from the Halloween one. I always liked how goofy this bit at the end was. Woohoo! Look at me, I'm body surfing! This is fun! Well, that one was always my favorite, and researching for this video, I found a better one called The Bunny Rabbit Movie, which just has to be seen to be believed. <laughs> That was the last one Animation Films 1212 uploaded for 12 years, before coming back in 2020 to post a new series called Makerville Hero, which looks slightly better, I guess. America and Football apparently refers to a specific video based on the way it's colored in the original image. However, there are quite a bit of videos with this title. For the unaware, American Football is the name of a pretty popular cult classic album by the band of the same name, which is even popular enough to have a whole sport named after it, and the album cover has it stylized to look like it says America and Football. The videos on YouTube will usually have that as the title and be short clips that use the first song on the album, Never Meant. I'm gonna assume that the chart is referring to this one specifically, based on it being the one with the highest amount of views, and also being old enough that it was made before the chart's release. It's simply a three second video of the song playing. It seems a pretty normal, well lit room, then this creature runs at you. I've actually already seen this in the form of a Discord GIF, but it's still a pretty good spook if you don't see it coming. Knock Plus 10 is another analog horror web series slash ARG. It started uploading in May of 2015 and followed a research station codenamed Nocturne located in Marianas Trench, seven miles deep underwater, which to be fair is a pretty cool setting. Within the station, there was a telepathic biocomputer created to develop weapons for the government. However, the AI really wants to die and is made from the brains of dead people. And also at some point the station flooded, so no one will ever come back to put it out of its misery. In typical ARG fashion, viewers are given codes within the videos that they have to decipher, leading to more videos that would unveil the plot. It's a neat story, but honestly, I don't blame if you're sick of these by this point. I honestly kind of would have preferred if this was like a book or something. Still though, if you want more info, Nightmind has a two-part series on it, so go check that out. Pimple popping videos are gross. Like, really gross. And surprisingly, they're pretty popular. If you couldn't tell from the name, they are videos where people will film close-up shots of them popping pimples, whether that be in their own, in the comfort of their house, professional doctors doing it on patients that deal with severe acne, and anything in between. These videos are definitely, definitely not my cup of tea. Don't get me wrong, I think it's pretty satisfying to pop a nasty pimple that's been bugging you for the past couple days. However, I wouldn't go actively searching for videos of people doing it, like some people, apparently a lot of people, do, judging by the fact that these videos will get upwards of millions of views, which is just kind of insane to me. I guess these are those oddly satisfying kinds of videos taken to their natural extreme. I do believe that a lot of these are uploaded by skincare companies and even spas, and they provide some sort of advertisement for their services. Like, like, hey, I know you. I saw you on YouTube when I was looking up pimple popping videos at 2 a.m. You're from Relax Skincare Every Day with Lone Nguyen Beauty Spa number 043. That one's my favorite. Possibly the best part of these videos to me will always be the comment section, as at least this one in particular has weirdly sophisticated comments judging the video and issuing praises. No horrible relaxing music, smooth pops, no sensationalism. This is perfect. Wonder if she deals with sebaceous filaments too. Yes, finally! Great job. Very thorough ad. Great technique. Someone who actually understands how and where to squeeze to get the sebum out without pushing it in further. Oh my god, this is the best video I've seen in ages. She cleaning the spot and her gloves. She not killing the face with overkill of squeezing and digging her nails. 10 out of 10. Really fine work. Doubling checking the pores and trying pressure and not always the needle. Cleaning section by section 2 instead of all over the place. Wonderful. A pleasure to watch. I think you get the point. 
I don't know. I just think it's funny that they're reviewing pimple popping videos like they're films or something. Is it a fetish thing? I mean, maybe. I think it seems a bit more pure than other similar entries on this iceberg. More just like a, man, I wish I could do that to my pimple kind of thing. But I could also be wrong, since, again, there are much weirder and more outlandish fetishes out there. Either way, I still think it's gross. Dad Films Ghost Playing on Playground Swing in Rhode Island is a video uploaded by Scott Denton from Warwick, Rhode Island. It features him and his kids in his truck, overlooking a playground. As he points out, for whatever reason, one of the swings is moving it violently back and forth while the others are completely stationary. He claims that there's no wind, and even if there was, it'd be weird for the other seats to not be moving, and not that one, right? Uh, not really. First of all, there clearly is wind in the video. You can literally hear it. And you can even make out tree swaying if you look hard enough. And if you know anything about physics, the surface area of the moving seat makes it so wind hits it harder, kind of like a sail, while the others have holes in them or are just the kind with bottoms and nothing else. It was a video that was pretty easily debunked, but still fooled enough people that it got its own share of debunkings, including Nexpo, funnily enough. Actually, people even went to the exact park he was at to show why it's bullshit, which is a strange amount of dedication. Funky Forest is a name you might be vaguely familiar with if you've watched this entire series up to this point. In Tier 6 Part 1, I covered weirdest video you will ever see, guaranteed, with the lady swinging a tennis racket at the guy squirting the weird fluid out of his nipples, and then this weird baby man thing starts sucking her blood. Yeah, you remember that one, you couldn't miss it. That video was actually a clip from a Japanese film titled Funky Forest, The First Contact, and this next entry is another clip from that same film titled Youth Classroom, which might be weirder, so I guess the title of that last one isn't very accurate. This one, I don't even know how to describe what's going on, so I'll just show you some clips. Oh. <laughs> だけどさ、社長さんつっても今不景気でしょ One last thing I'd like to say about Funky Forest is that this film actually stars Hideaki Anno, creator of Neon Genesis Evangelion, as an actor. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know either. Groaning Machine is a video uploaded to YouTube in 2014 by a sound designer named John Grieve. It shows off a machine that is basically just a bunch of bicycle wheels attached to groan tubes, which are this tube toy you can buy that are meant to make a groaning sound when you turn them on one end. This machine is the end product of like 30 of these things and produces this sound. Pig Day is a video made by Ryan Murphy in 2011, known for his collaborations with Neil Cicerigo. It describes a set of rules for an event called Pig Day, which has been celebrated since 1972, apparently. You should build a shrine, you should not go outside, any meat consumed must come pre-packaged with cheese, dreams experienced on Pig Day should not be shared to anyone, Pig Day is forbidden in Canada, and any image of Princess Diana is forbidden. That's just a few of the many rules of Pig Day, which occurs on March 1st. Follow them, and the pigs will be kind to you. Banjo Hero is an animated short film by Grady, Grady Train Sane, uploaded to YouTube in 2013 on his friend's channel, Nostril, with a zero instead of an O, though it's apparently as old as 2000. Yeah, it's pretty fucking old. The basic plot is that it follows three teenagers, Sammy, Bill, and a kid named Finger, working at an empty fast food place very late at night, and they're tasked with fighting off demons. With its surrealist animation, voice acting, and sound design, this really feels ahead of its time. 
I wouldn't be surprised if other animators on YouTube were heavily inspired by this work, or inspired by someone who was inspired by this work. What I'm saying is that I feel like this is the common ancestor of almost all the surrealist animators we talk about in this series, which I think is pretty interesting. Also, interestingly enough, Grady Sane is also known for his work on a cancelled video game for the 3DO called Duel and Fireman, which honestly looked just as weird. Matthew Cordell is the star of the video I Killed a Man, posted by the site Because I Said I Would to YouTube in 2013. In the video, he admits to having been responsible for a man's death. He explains that he was driving under the influence and lost control and hit a random passerby. That random passerby was 61 year old US Navy veteran Vincent Kanzani. He explains that his attorneys told him there's a way for him to get off scot free and that they can throw away the blood test as long as he simply lies in court. However, he decided not to do that, and instead uploaded this video, which acted as his confession for driving under the influence. He says he wants to honor the memory of the man he hit, and to do that, he's allowing himself to be charged with whatever he's charged with. Seven days after the release of the video, Matthew Cordell was charged with aggravated vehicular homicide and was sentenced to six and a half years in prison, with no chance of early release. In 2019, he was released five months early. Something's not lining up there, but you know, whatever. The victim's daughter wasn't very happy about Matthew's early release, saying that it could send a message that he could do whatever he wants now. However, nowadays it would seem he committed himself to anti-drunk driving activism, which I guess is the least he could do. Yiji Dado Wunia, or according to Google Translate, Relic Soy Unia, probably not true, but whatever, is a channel with about 10,000 subscribers and has since been renamed to Sherlin Zavala. It was created in 2017, though it wouldn't begin uploading until 2018. All of the videos on the channel are rather short, short enough for them to get automatically transferred over to YouTube Shorts, and all the titles are in Vietnamese. The actual content of the videos is, well, yeah, I don't know either. All the videos feature this young girl in a dress that's apparently held captive by the channel owners, usually accompanied by strange sounds. Some of the videos feature a man harming and scaring the girl. It's obviously a work of fiction, this girl isn't actually kidnapped, but it is pretty successful at getting under your skin. Bunny Rabbit is a musical artist who, according to legend, went missing in the mid-1990s. Characterized by his outfit, which is based around you know, a bunny rabbit, and also being seven feet tall for some reason, he was apparently quite a talented musician, had the voice of an angel. According to his fan site, bunnyrabbit.fans, he was discovered at a local yard sale in an old school camcorder bag that contained a VHS tape with one of his old music videos. His music catalog is apparently very scarce and hard to find, and contains about 30 songs that were all dug up through several interactive puzzles through anonymous emails and Discord servers, and yeah, it's another ARG. However, I do kind of appreciate any ARG that's just an excuse to advertise an artist's music, especially when this one is considerably more morally acceptable than something like World Corp. YTP Tennis is, in my opinion, one of the most interesting subsects of the YouTube poop community. It's a game that YTPers will play where the rules are quite simple. First, someone takes an existing video and makes a YouTube poop out of it, and then someone takes that YouTube poop and makes a YouTube poop out of it. This game continues and continues until it's essentially incomprehensible to anyone besides the participants. Back in Tier 5, I talked about a video called YTP Sexer, and as one of my commenters pointed out, that video is actually part of one of these tennis matches. These will quickly go from standard humorous edits to still humorous but with a really weird sense of humor and then right to bullying the fuck out of their poor and defenseless copy of Adobe After Effects. A prime example is a channel called Missa Daxio, which is a channel I've discovered only recently, and is, in my opinion, one of the most intriguing channels on YouTube. By the way, photosensitive people might want to turn away for the rest of the century. This channel kind of fucks your eyes raw. It's not exactly the most popular example, not by a long shot, however it is notable for being the longest running YTP tennis project ever starting in 2018 and now standing at nine and a half thousand videos, uploaded extremely frequently. The first video was simply an edit of the progressive commercial that features Sonic the Hedgehog. Fast forward a hundred rounds later and it begins to look like this. Fast forward to round a thousand and it looks like this. Round 5000 is a crazy, massively ambitious, hour and a half long special with every single collaborator pitching in. Also, yeah, if you couldn't tell, Missadaxia was actually made up of a ton of different people, 
Kind of like Siva Gunner, because, like, yeah, you need a lot of fucking people to upload this frequently. 135 people, apparently, according to the spreadsheet linked in the channel description. The channel owner, System128, left a comment on the r slash deep into YouTube post about this channel, explaining that it's simply abstract art, utilizing the rules of YTP Tennis, that originally just started with two buddies on Discord, until they invited more and more people. It's still going very strong to this day, and they always do a big special video for every thousand round milestone, so I'm excited to see what they do for the big 10k. Ah yes, Toys in Japan. Also known as C-Doko, this channel was possibly one of the most infamous cases of Elsagate content, as it began getting traction around 2016. The channel posted a ridiculous amount of videos in its prime, about 15 per day, though almost all of them were now privated or deleted, which is effectively the same thing. While they were around though, their videos consisted of about two things only, finger family videos and five little monkeys jumping on the bed videos. The only difference between their thousands of videos was the fact that they would always swap up the monkeys jumping on the bed or the finger family fingers for each video. For example, five little PewDiePie jumping on the bed, five little boss baby jumping on the bed, five little Shreks jumping on the bed, and five little giant purple Peppa Pig hulks jumping on the bed. If those aren't your speed, maybe you'd like Undertale finger family, Frozen finger family, Five Nights at Freddy's Farting Finger Family, Spider-Man Dinosaur Finger Family, or even Donald Trump Christ the Redeemer Finger Family, or Hitler vs. Mickey Mouse Finger Family. Eh, kind of ending where we started the video. This channel got a fair bit of traction with content creators like Critical, H3H3, and even PewDiePie himself commentating over it. The channel stopped uploading at some point in 2017 and then deleted all their videos. However, over the past couple years, Toys in Japan went through some weird changes. At first it changed back to its original name, C Doko, and then started uploading Fortnite gameplay streams. Then those were all deleted, and apparently he then started uploading music videos. And now very recently they're back, uploading videos that just seem like standard Coco Melon type stuff. Still though, Toys in Japan was one of the first times that major YouTube audiences got a taste of the weird shit that went on, and still continues to go on YouTube Kids. And that's pretty much it for part one of tier seven of the massive YouTube iceberg. You know, I've been noticing a bit of a trend with these tiers where each of them kind of has a theme more or less. Tier one was mostly stuff that happened in the past five years. Tier two was a lot of mid to late 2010s drama type stuff. Tier three was classic viral videos. Tier four was a bunch of ARGs and creepypastas and weird animations and stuff like that. Tier 5 delved deeper into weird art projects and the like, and Tier 6 was a lot of YouTubers that became criminals or otherwise dark things. Of course, these are far from the only things I talked about in each tier, but Tier 7, I can't really tell a theme. It kind of seems like a mix of the past three. Either way though, I am enjoying this tier. As always, of course, these videos are very fun to make for me, even if I haven't been uploading as frequently as I'd like, and I hope you guys are enjoying them as much as I am. In the next video, we'll be continuing on with tier 7. Till next time, see ya.